Pleasant good afternoon and welcome to our noonday prayer this week in which we have celebrated Pentecost Sunday, uh, the Sunday that marks the coming of the Holy Spirit uh, on the believers, uh, empowering them and encouraging them to spread the good news of the gospel. And so as we prepare for our devotion today, let us observe as always a moment of silent prayer as we acknowledge God's presence with us. But the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 14, and beginning to read at the 25th verse. Now large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself, cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it. Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to wage war against another king, will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000. If he cannot, then while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. So therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Now I may just simply entitle this reflection, The Cost of Discipleship. And you can see it in the reading that was just read from Luke's Gospel. But first, let me just wish you a happy and blessed with Monday, as I used to say. The Monday that follows um, Pentecost Sunday, or what some would call Whit Sunday. And it's an interesting week because of course, it, it, we have entered now this new season and next Sunday, the Sunday coming, we'll be celebrating the Trinity uh, when God, um, we believe, reveal himself as one God yet three persons, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. So it's an interesting week and, and one in which I invite you to do your daily devotions and follow the readings and so forth. Now yesterday in my Pentecost Sunday reflection, I said the following, quote, At the minimum, what happened on the day of Pentecost was a powerful and unmistakable statement, a pronouncement of a divine intention for the formation of a beloved community consisting of all people. We are each given the opportunity to hear for ourselves and in a manner that speaks to our awareness and understanding this message of the power of God's love to transform and renew us 
to make us evermore into his image and likeness. End of quote. It is really the body of Christ of which we heard St. Paul speak yesterday in the epistle reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, where Paul says, you know, the Spirit gives us all gifts. We're, we're gifted differently, but we are all to use these gifts for the good of all. And I think that is, is, that is precisely what Pentecost was all about. Um, this opportunity given to us by God to really form this community across the world, covering all languages and all the rest um, in order to spread the good news. The world remains desperate, as we know, for a message of inclusion that is also prepared to deal honestly and candidly with the issues that continue to divide and separate us into tribal arrangements of distrust, fear, and hatred, the very antithesis of divine love and mission. Our annual celebration of Pentecost Sunday then, my sisters and brothers, is a clarion call to all of us entrusted with this message of the gospel to renew our commitment to what we call the Missio Dei, mission of God. As the reading from St. Luke's Gospel today reminds us, however, there is a cost to this engagement in God's mission to the world. It will demand our complete commitment. The way Jesus puts it in today's Gospel, that commitment, the level of that commitment, the depth of that commitment may, may un force us at times to go against even mother and father, brothers and sisters, family and all others in order to complete the work. And so let us, as we journey now into the season of Pentecost and as we celebrate the Trinity this coming Sunday, renew our own commitment to the Missio Dei, mission of God to this world, and to do our part to make this world a better place, empowered and guided by God's Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. And deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. Almighty God, you opened the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Share abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Be with us, Lord, in all our prayers and direct our ways towards the attainment of salvation, that among the changes and chances of this mortal life, we may always be defended by your gracious help through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My sisters and brothers, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon us and grant us his peace. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us this day and remain with us always. Amen.
all I do.